to me it's the history yeah it's the story it's the uh the heritage that is america and mm-hmm. brought into kentucky and then expanded mm-hmm. yeah i mean and seriously like your passion for it got me excited eric had me eric got me going more pulled me away from scotch more and then you and your you know unrelenting commitment to that and your trips to uh the locations and hearing about that like it it brought me in it took a little bit right because it you, did i think you told me about like benchmark a good almost maybe a year and a half ago and i you Dude, know that's I was how like, i started on bourbon yeah like, and Greg's like, it was from you him try this ten dollar yeah. bourbon yeah it's a sleeper yeah it is so it's like you and that um really you're the we mention you a lot in our shows like we have a guy who's you know super you know knowledgeable and experienced and goes these places and you're basically referenced a lot um not by name properly but now that they know you they're going to have a face to what we always talk about like this guy told us about this and experienced this so i'm excited because i got this fortuna when it first came out on sellbacks and it wasn't like now so doing research today i see that it's actually a total wine mm-hmm. i was like i didn't even know it was there because the sellbacks pricing is um is like over ten dollars uh less is it sealbacks how do you what do you even say is it sealbacks sellbacks sealbacks but yeah i paid about that so 85 and look at look at total wines like they want 99 oh wow mm-hmm. yeah and, and i didn't realize it was actually on a shelf here uh, it wasn't there initially. This this is a new development. Um, but I had it, and me and Eric intended to do this quite a while ago, and I that's why it's open because I was like, oh my god, it's sitting there, and I go like, I gotta try it, and I like it. I liked it, and I didn't obviously. Well, I drank a little bit, but just a little bit, a little bit. It just was really half. good. It was really good. It reminded me of some other good ones, mm-hmm. and that's why I kind of kept in it. And um, but you, I appreciate what you dug into. So we're looking forward to hearing. Well, it should, and you know, getting back to you, it brings you back. It should bring you back because the original founder, he worked for Stitzel, and then it changed hands a couple of times. The branding changed, and then in the '60s, when Bourbon died, it sat dormant yeah. until. You know, the new uh, character, rare character whiskey came in in 2020, 2021 and started digging through dust covered bottles. Hmm. And that's where the labeling comes from. That's where hmm. the play, fa- flavor profile comes from. They're blending six different barrels now through the um, suppliers that they get, hmm. MGP, unknown sources in Kentucky. Yeah and um tennessee so they're blending those six barrels to Mm. come up with their with their flavor profile that they're getting from that bottle that they found oh really deep in a cellar so they they like they open the bottle and they're like they're trying to match basically those flavors and notes and stuff like that with the flavors and notes and the artwork wow yeah that's That's complicated so and then they bring it in at uh, 102 proof and um they're actually starting to uh push out a uh a higher proof really uh, so we'll see how that comes out if they if they push it so that's pretty complicated because he and i have wondered about those brands that have this uh name lineage and we wonder if when they're brought back 100 years later 80 years later and stuff like that yeah are they really what that guy uh was sipping and that's cool that they put to put that effort into that so well, let's yeah. start let's Start doing the nose and the taste, and then we can continue talking about it. But I like, I don't like to talk on a, on a dry mouth. <laughs> so it smells one, it says 102. 102. I can smell the caramel. Yeah, we poured this, let it sit a tiny bit, at least some burned off. It's a nice 102, though. It's not like mm-hmm. yeah. overpowering, but it gives you enough. Mm. 
So if you sit and you listen to some interviews with the CEO, Peter, they say they unknown, unknown or unnamed sources yeah. through Kentucky. Um, what do you suspect? Well, digging into one of his partners, Andy Shapira, Shapira family founded Heaven Hill. Mm-hmm. And it's still owned by them. So they're getting these bottles, they're, they're getting these um, barrels that are somewhat unwanted by these big distillers. Mm. And then they're bringing them and they're mixing them to their fla- flavor profile that they want to achieve. And I think they achieved a good profile with yeah, this bottle. And the gentleman that this is from the 1800s, right? This brand, 1800s, it went 1880. 1880. Mm hmm. And he had a uh, a German lineage, right? Wasn't he? Was he like an immigrant or something? What was the deal with that? I didn't really dig too far into his past, but when he came onto the scene, he worked for Stitzel in Louisville. Okay. Oh, really? So you, you and that's why you have, um, that's the, it's just you know bourbon and its history. Everybody's worked for somebody or have had that each other. involvement, mm-hmm. and it's that network and everybody helps everybody yeah. out if they have a disaster other companies step in to mm. to help make their product so it's they cool can... that like someone for exactly example like someone will be with stitzel for you know years and do their thing there and then they'll move on to another company and maybe start their own or just be a master distiller at a different company and bring all that knowledge there and it's just it's just shared amongst the bourbon community it is and it helps it grow but so gone the nose mm. brown sugar rye mm-hmm. it's rye. a high rye right so yeah. this thing's like a basically a high rye bourbon or something yeah they're saying rye bread graham crackers and of course you have the caramel mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep Graham cracker. And I, go ahead. Unlike other bourbons, their taste is very similar to the smell. Mm. I think I think I was reading do you do you know where the, the name Fortuna came from? I did not research that. The the founder it was based on the like good fortune. He started his company and mm-hmm. he wanted good fortune, so the he, that's where he got Fortuna from. Yeah, it's uh, he strived to delight customers far and wide by sharing some of the taste of good fortune provided to his family. So is he reciprocating on the uh, essential blessings of moving to America and you know the the opportunities that it awaited him? That might be it. Yeah, and a good part about this is all the barrels are at least six years old. All right? of them that go that go into this, and when you dive in, when you dive into the history of how um, it you know it goes from Stitzel to Glencoe and then National Distillers, and then it just in the '60s when Bourbon died, it it just stops, <laughs> yeah. and then um, it was picked back up by you know Rare Character Whiskey, and um, they. They have a few different bottles in their uh, in their selection to choose from, but with this, it's um, it's really taking um, it's a lineage bottle. So mm-hmm. they want to bring the past back to life, and I think they've done it well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's cool. Pay back homage label too. to the past where bourbon started. Yeah, cool back label. Yeah, d- yeah actually, that's a pretty cool point about tasting what it matching the smell mm-hmm. and then the finish um as should have the same profile with a little black pepper a yeah. mild burn and they're yep. saying some black tea hmm. never tasted never thought about that hmm. it stays on the pa- you, like it stays on the palate do you stay on the palate with you guys it's, it does it yeah. holds on nice dry finish yeah when you think about the black tea, yeah, it does come out, but mm-hmm. I don't get that right away. It's, it's not a very yeah. standout. Yeah. No. But the bottle is pretty cool, too. And I think the bottle pays, pays homage to the original bottle as well, right? It does. Yeah, the, 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 the artwork. Yeah. Yeah, six-year-old traditional rye, 102, distilled and aged. They're saying 
all of it's Kentucky? Is this 100% Kentucky? Well, even though it's different locations in Kentucky? Distilled and aged in Kentucky. So they may have poured, because they pull from MGP. Mm-hmm. They pull from unknown sources in Tennessee. And Tennessee. Unknown sources in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one interview I was watching, it's, um, you know, when they get set up with these uh, distilling companies in Kentucky, by the time they get to the quality control, they get yeah. they get the big chopping block from the quality control and say, like, hey, you can't name us here. <laughs> because they're getting these bottles, these they're, these barrels that they don't want to push out, or maybe it's right. not meeting their flavor profile, right. but it is to, you know, to this company. It's cool that like nothing goes to waste, you know. Like, yeah, if something doesn't work out for you, you know, you another company is willing to mm-hmm. add it to theirs, and dude, it it can create a really great bourbon, like right here. Look at this, yeah. you know. And that's what bourbon's about, yeah. from. You know the oak to the corn and mm-hmm. the soil, and it all plays a part. And then by the time the the mash goes in, and and you know the mash is even recycled for cattle yeah. feed, yep. right? And grain to glass, uh, and then back to the uh, and the oak. Look at all these artists that are doing stuff with the the staves now. Yeah, yeah, like our shelves. Yeah. I mean, they're the dudes doing great stave shelves. Mm-hmm. So, I'd like to be that cattle though. Imagine that. Oh you know, man, just munching on mash all day. <laughs> man so let's go to the next uh, tab so you've got Fortuna okay. uh, so going back to the history of this bottle and you know resurrecting it uh, from Stitzel to Glencoe to National Distillers that's something I like about bourbon is because there's a lot of different labels there's a few players and it's the history so National distillers come down to it. That's something that everybody who has ever been to Kentucky knows the Colonel's Castle. Mm-hmm. So, you know, old Taylor, uh, if you uh, scroll down a little bit, he was part of National Distillers, and there's some of their labels. You know, you have your old granddad. Mm. That's so cool. Yeah, you have Taylor. You have uh, just, and, you know, Lux Row. It's all there. And now Lux is a part of what, MGP? Yeah. And when you go to uh, the next tab uh, to that, you have uh, so MGP brands, something mm. that everybody's always seen, you know, Ezra Brooks, Yellowstone, mm. Dos Primos. And to me, um, what, but you know, with the, with the sweat and the labor and the, the uh, ingenuity behind such an American product, yeah. mm-hmm. our neighbors just to the south of us, they do the same thing with tequila. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It, uh, the dedication to the quality shows, mm-hmm. yeah. especially when, you know, you're 200 years in the making. Yeah. So you go to MGP who sells their brands to everybody, whether it's theirs or, you know, 10 uh, old soul, 10 cup, hmm. um, they uh, they do great things yeah. up there in Indiana. Everything kind of pays homage to the origins of, of bourbon, you mm-hmm. know, like from the bottle to the, the spirit inside. So I think that's very cool. Scroll down a little bit, Lee. Yeah, let's go to the next tab. I started reading this one too. Mm-hmm. It's it's got some good stuff, you know. It, the, the MSRP is eighty five, you know, the Bruce one hundred two, and then it goes down into the history. So if you scroll down a little bit, you can actually see, um, you know, what we were just talking about and how this new company is brought into. Nope, not too, not so fast. Go a little bit. There we go. It's brought into, you know, into another company that's still really prevalent in seven hill so you know andy's family has run heaven yeah. hill and you know bringing in that when the two brothers started heaven hill who do they look for for help yeah the beam family yeah so mm-hmm. um you know they brought over a beam and uh, hmm. it's uh they brought over parker beam hmm. which uh, when you go to heaven hill if you're lucky enough to grab a bottle of parker's heritage really yeah. it uh it's, they're paying homage to Parker Beam. Hmm. That's cool. And 
you know, Jim Beam got me started in the whole bourbon yeah, world yeah, because, and yeah. everybody's like, oh, it's Jim Beam. But you don't understand how, yeah. you know, Jim Beam is still family owned. Yeah. yeah. You know, just like Heaven Hill. Yeah. And everybody in modern day has a beam somewhere yeah. in their distiller, whether it's Mectors, you know, Heaven Hill pays homage to it. And uh, it's, they're doing good things. I, yeah. I feel like people think of Jim Beam like just shelf whiskey, you know, like entry level, like, oh, there's, but there's so much more than just that, yeah. like basic Jim Beam. Mm -hmm. The foundation. And, yeah. <clears throat> My wife just made a trip to Indiana and she stopped at Jim Beam and she walks in and she's like, hey, do you guys have anything special today? And they're like, well, if you wait 15 minutes over there in that line, uh, we're actually releasing a, uh, a bottle today and uh, Fred and Freddie know are going to be here to um, That's so awesome. she waited around she got some pictures she yeah. got the bottles autographed yeah, yeah. and um, Jim Beam will always be a special place yeah. place for me it's right. cool like I, right. yeah. I've been we were in Kentucky the same time and I had uh, I had went to Jim Beam that, they were probably one of the coolest just distillers like mm -hmm. for like warehouse wise and like they were huge and there was so much like just cool things to see there you mm. know everything from their um their main area to where you're drinking you know upstairs where they had that whole bar set up that mm -hmm. was cool yeah. that was really cool and if you make it over they you know they have that new restaurant and bar there and their head bartender he i think he's like number three in kentucky for the most popular bartender oh really he's won some awards and That's wow cool. um he makes some good stuff so uh, last year when the wife and i were there we you know had a had a pizza and I'm like, Hey, pour me some of this and pour me some of that. So some of the stuff that you can't get outside the distillery, right. that's very limited. Mm. And, um, you know, sticking with Jim Beam, you know, behind your shoulder leaves that Jim yeah. Beam distiller masterpiece. Yep. So when, Thanks my son, to you, yeah. Yeah, when my son was born, I found that bottle. It was one ninety nine, and uh, he's eight now. And I didn't want to wait that long until he turns 21 <laughs> yeah. to try it. <laughs> so I went and bought another one and I've had a couple pours out of it. But, you know, when people think Jim Beam, they think that that, that white label, but yeah. it's so much more. It's so much more and than the white label. Wait till you crack that, Lee. It's, it's complex and it, it's delicious. I'm it afraid delicious. until I have like something to, I, I want to try something before I, I really don't want to crack it. Mm. That was quite the, Dude, that was, was quite the score. one of those people like yeah. all when I saw Jim Beam, I saw a white label, just basic. Like, I didn't even touch it. Like, I'm mm -hmm. like, no, nah, that's like the basic Jack Daniels of things, you know? But yeah. since I've been to Kentucky and you've opened my eyes to just bourbon in general, like, um, they have so much stuff to offer, you mm -hmm. know, that's, that's so tasty and that it's so cool that everything's intertwined. Like, dude, I don't know. I just, I love bourbon so much and Jim Beam is probably one of my favorites now. Jim Beam and Woodford are probably one of my two favorite mm -hmm. favorite uh, distilleries. So, and talk about distilleries, you know, um, it's you. You should try that Jim Beam. Uh, you know, whether it's a special occasion or so, it's something. It's, he doesn't like to open his bottles. I'm the no, exact opposite. I'll, I'll crack open a bottle. You only live once, Lee. Yeah, that is well worth it. I don't know, man. So once it's open, to like I can't have it on. I don't like yeah. put it on display once it's like not once it's open. As well. Yeah, and distilleries they're they're so unique, but at the same time they have their own little thing to offer, and that's that's going there and experiencing that it, it's mm. uh it it ties into the story which is you know the taste of bourbon is amazing to me and you know with there's no wrong, wrong way to drink bourbon but to experience you know the distilling process and mm. the history and see the grounds yeah. that have uh been around for mm. multi-generations whether it's family owned or you know large corporation owned it's uh it's a good experience and you know we try to go up there every year or yeah. every two years and uh last year you joined us at whiskey thief yeah so i was just gonna say i'll tell you what's cool is like seeing like we were there and we saw pretty we saw like what seven or eight distilleries mm -hmm. and whiskey thief was probably one of my favorite just because of how small and family owned it is like to see where something starts mm -hmm. and then to go to like a jim beam where like it yeah. is like it's the mecca you yeah know? it goes from family owned in a warehouse to and they're they're actually clearing a bunch of land and mm. um, expanding their stuff. But it's this, up now. Oh, really? It is up. <clears throat> and uh, Cleo, the uh, cat, <laughs> Sam <laughs> he, loved that. He's cat. chilling. Yeah. he's chilling in that uh, new uh, rack house. And the dog. I forget what the dog's name was, but they had a pretty cool dog there too. Yeah, they do. But but it, to be able to sit there and to to try you know samples at Buffalo Trace 
and for that yeah. guy to say, hey, if you want to try something cool, go down the road. It's yeah. five, ten minutes away. Yep. Whiskey thief. It, it's just inviting. And as you drive yep. down the hills and turn the corner and you come up on this barn, you see this huge copper yeah. You know, just, just glaring out of the, if the sun's hitting it just right. And it's like, Hey, he's out, is, he's got an outdoor situation. No, it's all in a barn. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just pull up on it and you walk in and they have uh two, three different tasting areas and you get to try six different barrels right yeah. out of the, just right laying, out of thief. Laying on the ground. You take the thief right out of the, like, and it's unfiltered raw. Like you're getting chunks of char in, in your glass. Like it, it was a cool experience. And Greg actually, uh, stayed there. In the RV mm-hmm. overnight. The RV, Clark. Yeah, yeah they're mm-hmm. uh, they're a host and a harvest host. So my wife put together this family trip, and we started and we went to you know through Tennessee up to Kentucky, and then I wanted some uh, I wanted some low country food, so we drove all the way to uh, South Carolina just for lunch. Mm. <laughs> but uh, the shrimp and grits, yeah, mm. shrimp and grits, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, since it was summer, we had to do something for the boys, so we took him over to Kennedy. And thankfully, yeah. that day oh, that's cool. a rocket launched. Uh, oh man! At, really? at the end of the day, so Dude. we sat there. Um, my wife was making tacos, and uh, she came out right over the water. Rocket went oh, up. Man. We Dude, went you, in. You can't touch that. Dude. That's like that's cool. Yeah. That's wow. Badass. And parked right next to us was uh, this girl from college, and she's a she was an aeronautical engineer, uh, or going to be. And so my wife or my uh, son and her were just talking about, oh man, yeah, they're just going. There's the beginning. Yeah, so it's that's cool. Yeah, it's and the journey stuff like that. Yeah, the journey and the story. Yeah, like, um, dude, you, it's like it's way better than Disney. Like you just go to Kentucky, you stay at an Airbnb or an RV or whatever, mm-hmm. and you just like distillery hop. Mm. For yeah, two days a and, week, you know, yeah. whatever. In October, know. we're going up. We're going to stay in a uh, in a Airbnb. Mm-hmm. We got a extra bedroom or two. If, yeah, uh, I'm trying. Yeah, I got to make it up. I got to break it to somebody, you know, if I can pull this off. Yeah, you I said you were already going to ask her. So yeah, I know. It's just, <laughs> yeah, I want to go. Yeah, and that's because every time you go there, you might discover something new. Yeah, and that's that's the fun and the whole thing is discovering that bottle that no one else has or something you haven't tried before, and these distilleries. I was uh, listening to uh, Buffalo Trace the other day. They have b- bourbon in the barrel, slated for twenty forty seven. You know these Whoa. guys are planning oh, wow. um, year, way in advance. You know, way in advance wow. because you know bourbon has came back you know a, a lot since the eighties for us, but it's just now being discovered overseas, Asia, yeah. Yeah. and the European market. They're going crazy for it now too. Yeah, really? So these distilleries. Who to think, you know, back, you know, 10 years ago, rye was not a big thing. Right. Yeah. And now in the last few years, rye has just exploded. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, there's and, some big rye pullers. Yeah, and yeah. that's, yeah. you know, going back to the Jim Beam, you know, we, uh, a few years back, we went to Michter's, and this was before they had the downtown experience to open. So we pull up to Michter's, and uh, where I'm sitting there in a the parking lot trying to read the door, seeing if, you know, when they open, when they close, if they offer any tours. And this, uh, this guy comes walking out, he comes over to me, he's like, Hey, can I help you with anything? I'm like, I, we love Mictors. We love the product. The quality is amazing. And, uh, he's like, well, can I ask there any questions for you? So we're sitting there talking hmm. 10, 15, 20 minutes goes by. He's Dan McGee. Back then he was the assistant, uh, master distiller. Now he's a headmaster distiller. Wow. But when Mictors was started back up, they, they took someone from Jim Beam, hmm. you know, to, uh, pull over to, to form Mictors. Hmm. And that's, you know, when someone asks, Hey, what's a good rye? to make a old fashioned from, I say Mictor's rye because nice. everything's high quality and it's kosher. Yeah. Right. And, and, um, that was something and it's, it's hmm. just the story and, yeah. and, you know, it just pulls back and how it, it all encompasses everybody. 100%. Yeah. So, it's so yeah, cool. Lee wasn't always a fan of rye, but I feel no. like lately you're, yeah. Yeah. you're starting to get into the rye yep. and stuff. I'm handling the so. spice. Like this is high spice. Like I, what, what do you think back in November? I probably wouldn't even maybe like this. I maybe, don't know. I think not. back in November, you've had some, you had some, you started off with some rides that were really bad. It really screwed bad me up. For you. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it yeah. kind of put you away it, from it. Yeah. But. Correct. Yeah. Well, so. remember when uh, he said he didn't like a weeded bourbon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I poured him. He some. had no idea he was drinking Weller. <laughs> yeah. And time. I poured him some Weller. He said, man, this is great. I'm like, He's it's, been drinking damn, Weller. it's a weeded <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> you know, and that's in that, you know, just the, the history going back to it, it you, you go to Weller and everybody's like, Oh, Pappy, 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 Pappy. Yeah. Well, Pappy worked 
for Stitzel Weller. Yeah. And then when he took over the <laughs> distillery, he blended Weller to <laughs> make Pappy. Yeah. And, you know, everything going in is pretty much the same thing. Yeah. The same ingredients. But what makes it unique is where it's at in the rack house, whether it's on the top floor or the bottom floor or somewhere right. in the middle where, you know, how that rack house is exposed to the sunlight or what weather it goes through that particular distilling season. That makes it special. And for, you know, the Colonel Taylors and the Blantons to be able to pull those certain barrels to make their fla flavor profile yeah. to help bring bourbon back to petition the government to say, hey, we need a bottle and bond act. Hey, we yeah. need this. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that to me is the story of America and how it grows. Yep. Yeah, and I agree. So it's a... Uh, it's good stuff. It's just well, in exciting. like these distilleries, you go there and they're so like, they're so lax and they're so like, they want, they want you to be immersed into it. Like mm -hmm. I remember when we went to Buffalo and you had your son Christopher and like, we're just walking by the Bland's shop and the windows were open and he's like standing on his tiptoes looking through and, uh, and the guy handed him some, yeah. some horse. Yeah. The bottle uh, cap. The yeah, the he's, bottle cap. And he's nice. got a couple of them too, yeah, because nice. you know, that journey started, uh, we started taking him up there when he was one, one and a half, two. And so he has a couple, uh, you know, and, you know, the Blanton's crap. Everybody knows it. it's yeah. a horse race and it spells yeah. out Blanton's. Yeah. So hopefully one day he'll be able to complete his bottle caps yeah. just by, That's cool. you yeah. know, being there. Right. That's cool. Um, but it's uh, just that. It's yeah. uh, it's America. Yeah, it, it is. You know, with uh, we're, uh, we're almost, we have a good, you know, decade or a couple decades left of, of these generations, but I mean, you've been there, you've seen it. What do you think? Like, is this going to sustain itself? Are we going to have, is there sight of a, of a continuation of this generational significance to these, to these items? Like we're, we have some people that are, you know, coming near, near the end of things. So like, like I, like at Detling, when I go there, I, Samuel, he's, He's, he's told me this son, he's like, well, the one of the sons, he's like, I am my, my goal is to continue this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he, he, you can see it in his eyes. He is going to do it. What about these other ones? I mean, do they have people to keep this going so we can keep talking about this in 20 years from now? What I think, think so. You I feel think, it? Yeah. Because like, uh, you know, Fred and Freddie know, you know, Freddie is on the forefront of taking, you know, uh, his bottles and his perception of bourbon he's pushing that out and a lot of them you can only obtain them from buffalo trace yeah. or sorry uh jim beam mm -hmm. if if it's there and um to be able to go to jim beam sit you know sit on the balcony at the restaurant yeah. overlook their grounds yeah. mm -hmm. and uh just to be able to try them mm -hmm. and it's they're pushing the envelope and just like how the rye bourbon kind of made its splash on you know the scene there's other bourbons that are going to be pushing themselves like this resurrection bottle right here. Yeah. It's, you know, gone in the, in the dust and just set in a dark warehouse. Yeah. And then, you know, three years ago, a company comes out and says, Hey, let's resurrect this. And, yeah. you know, they blend six different barrels yeah. to make this product and it tastes good. It has a good yeah. flavor flavor profile that nose is good. The finish is good. You know, for 102 proof, it doesn't blow you out the window. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, to know the, to, to be able to just taste this product, right? Let's say you get that bottle and you have the wherewithal to know to source that many different things to get this to that point. That is super complex, right? Yeah. That I is feel super like that's complex. just bourbon in general, though. You know, like everyone just, it's all for just new experiences and just, just crafting the spirit in general, you mm -hmm. know, like taking each other's stuff and mixing it together and, you know, it's it's times like this where you you just sit and hang out with friends and you're drinking a bottle and you're talking about uh, paying homage to that bottle and the origins of that. But like, and then just thinking about everything that went into that, you know, in, in separate um, distilleries and like, dude, until you've been to Kentucky or just a distillery and sat there with friends and like drank a drink and mm. looked over the grounds and stuff, like yeah. it's just it's an experience of no other, you know. And, yeah. Um, dude, Christopher, like I, there's no, 
there's no way in my mind that I can not think that Christopher is going to grow it up and like drink bourbon. Yeah. Well, right now you know, he's stuck on, he's not going to drink, which is perfectly yeah. fine. You know, his, mm-hmm. my, his mind is at a level that's just, it, it supersedes yeah. you know, a, a typical eight year old. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I think our next voyage, uh, once we, we visit all the distilleries that Kentucky has to offer, mm-hmm. it's going to, I think it's going to go into the horse side of things for Kentucky yeah. mm. because when they took the river boats down the Ohio river from Kentucky to Mississippi and Louisiana to, to sell their product, they bought the fastest horse to make it back Hmm. because that was still Indian territory Mm. along the rivers. So that's how horse racing. That's where that is. And Kentucky came into play is because they wanted the fastest horse to get Hmm. back the quickest and to get back alive. Oh, that's cool. So with, you know, I grew up with horses and my wife has a love for horses. Um, we're going to, uh, start that and they actually have a horse trail so you can get a, a booklet and get all your stamps yeah and just like the bourbon trail you can get that taken care oh, of that's and cool. i think at the end you get a t-shirt <laughs> uh, you'll get <laughs> which it. makes it yeah, worth it you'll I mean, get just, it just give me a hat yeah and uh it's it's something there dude he was he was excited with that what was that was the little mallet thing that you guys got what was that yeah we uh it was at another harvest host as we we're making our way up uh, we stopped and stayed at a uh a harvest host who turns wood and he made him a, uh, a wooden mallet. Yeah, dude, he was ex- dude, yeah. that he's going to love that shirt. If he was that excited about that, that mallet, I don't know. He's, he's, it seems like he's really into that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I imagine the horse thing would be pretty cool for him and you never know. Maybe, maybe he'll change his mind when he gets older, but, or just hang out with his dad. Pal will, his his dad's. It, yeah. His pal will change and he'll have, yeah. Yeah. That's all he's eight. It's not like he's, yeah, he's exactly. not, he, not that I know of, you yeah, know, oh <laughs> I better not wake up oh and have uh, brown bourbon bottles <laughs> filled with clear liquid. You there's know? no way to tell at your house. There's too much bourbon. There's, yeah, there's yeah. no way to tell if he's been drinking it or not. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> he might not like it till he's in his thirties. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. I was never a beer person and my wife, she was a beer girl and yeah. until she started hanging out with me and it's uh she went from a beer girl to a bourbon girl and oh this just, is a serious transition like it's yeah. it's you know it's a you got to get the whole big picture yeah you and know? you know she it's like last night she's like oh you know i'm like i made dinner but she's like oh i was thinking about muddling some cherries and putting some, oh yeah i uh, saw you yeah yeah what'd yeah. you do it was uh just a muddled uh since cherries are in season we uh she muddled some cherries with uh, some benchmark and mm. topped it with a splash of ginger ale Hmm. And uh, it was actually really good. Did you shake? Did you left the muddled cherries inside mm-hmm. the glass? Oh, you okay. did, which gave gotcha. it that uh, that rose, you know, complexion, that rose pink red complexion. Nice. And uh, so she just she made herself a cocktail, mm. and that sounds like a a spiked uh, Shirley Temple, essentially, <laughs> right? You do. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. I mean, that sounds amazing. So it's a. Uh, yeah, dude. Well, thanks for coming on the show today, man. Yeah, like, man. <clears throat> this is not gonna be the, the last time because. Well, I hope you're, not. <laughs> you're right. You're pretty experienced with this stuff, and you're awesome to talk to. You have so much, so much more to impart. So yeah, uh, we just we appreciate you coming on the show today and filling us in a little bit on the Fortuna. So no, I, I appreciate you having me. It was a it was a good bottle. It was a good pick. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Hopefully, they continue this legacy brand. Yeah. And, um, because they're starting out, you know, and they, yeah. they got shut down, you know, COVID killed their main business, mm. you know, 2020, yeah. you know, um, and they're like, Hey, let's get into this. So yeah. they got into it and they had some connections and, you know, they had some people that knew people, you know, cause some of their, pe- some of the people have ties to, you know, uh, deep Turkey and yeah, another good one. It's, uh, everyone's tied to everyone out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're doing good things. Yeah. So hopefully they continue it and we get to enjoy their, um, their offerings for many more years. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to keep challenging you is hopefully something that's not in your collection already. So that's you got to look hard. into it. That's I do. Gonna that's going to be tough. No. Yeah. And maybe I'll bring something. Yeah. I got to look. My, my wife's Surprise my inventory us. keeper. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got it. She's got it all documented. <laughs> she does. Oh, well, that's something we need to do. We have to put it on Excel or something. Yeah. Just because I need something on my phone. So when I go in a liquor store, like the other day, oh, I you're was, not buying. You're like, oh, another damn bottle. it! I yeah. already have that. Yeah. As I was looking at Jefferson's and uh, trying to get another Voyage of Ocean, and mm-hmm. uh, when because when we got married, uh, they gave us a bottle of thirteen, mm-hmm. and that started it to be able, mm-hmm. you know, to go into Jefferson's the, the salty and the caramel of you know the Ocean Voyage. It's just, so I saw some bottles and I'm like, Hey, do we have this? Yeah. Hold on. Let me stop what I'm doing to <laughs> go look and, yeah. you know, she's don't like, buy it. Don't buy it. We have it. Yeah, we have it. And that's, that's how you got your bottle of a uh, Jim Beam distiller masterpiece. I saw two on the shelf uh-huh. at this liquor store still at one ninety nine eight years yeah. later. Yeah. And I'm like, Whoa. So yeah. I text my wife. I'm like, Hey, do we need this? And she's like, no, yes. we don't. We have already have a couple bottles. So I, s- I sent out a message and Lee, uh, yeah. I could, I could see the blue smoke coming out of Lee's yeah. tires from, yeah. you know? Yeah. So he made it there and Dave made it there yep. and they we both took the picked boat. it up and yep. Dave came over. He's like, Hey, when, you know, Hey Wendy, thanks for uh, telling Greg not to buy it. Cause this bottle sells for like 1400 bucks online. Like, yep. what? Yeah. What? We need it now. I was like, well, no, it's, that's not around. It was, it the was homies a, got them. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hopefully you open it one day and you get to enjoy a little sip because just like money, you can't Maybe take we can it. Get you, him drunk enough and hell, I don't know. No, man. you That's, don't. I wouldn't want to. You know, it don't. Yeah. That'd be a bottle I would just sip when it, yeah. it comes to it because, you know, once you reach a certain point, it's. it's oh, I don't mean for him. I mean for us, and then he can enjoy it later because <laughs> it's already open. Oh, yeah. yeah, but yeah. it's like it's like Jim, <laughs> like Jim B, man. I, yeah, they uh, they follow us like yeah. I really, really appreciate a large, you know, entity like them actually noticing us. Mm-hmm. So I like that bottle on the wall. It's my prize until I go there. Right? I need to go there. I need to get a come new with pri- us. I need to get a new prize. Quite frankly, Kentucky, um, October. I do. I need a new prize. The week of October twentieth, we'll be there. It'll be you can help celebrate my birthday. Uh, we have that dinner booked with uh, Fred and Freddie. No, right? I need to book that. It's uh. Time, so. You know, so we're going to be going there. We're going to have dinner with them and uh, get to sit down and to talk right. to them. And that's maybe after you get back, you can say, hey, maybe or, I a new you know prize. what? You know what? If, if a they, signed new prize yeah. and it goes up there and we can actually have yeah. that. You know, and that's that's why it's like I go there. It's like, hey, can I try this, this and this? That way I have to open my bottles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I've already tried yeah. it. And yeah. then when we do have that's an event point. at the house, if yeah. something says, hey, let's open this bottle. Yeah. Because, you know, a a bottle is meant to be shared with family and friends. Hundred percent. And when you open it, you leave it open until it's 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 you know we're either done, or the bottle's done. And, yeah. And if the bottle's done and we're not done, then we got to find something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree, man. That watching the uh, the documentary with um, the guy from who yeah. was a neat neat I think it was neat though. right after watching that um, it changed my entire perspective on like leaving bottles closed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just the, the point when he says, you know, I went to put the lid on it. My dad said, what are you doing? Yeah. And then it's a 5,000 know, bottle, $5,000 yeah. bottle of Pappy. Yeah. You know? like so they like, sat there and they drank this. it. And then, you know, a few months later, his dad, and his brother were gone. Yeah. Mm. And you know, they got to enjoy that bottle mm. that yeah. Julian Van Winkle gave him mm. for his, you know, uh, for his state, you know, his worth all at yeah. Buffalo trace. It's, uh, that to me is bourbon. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people don't realize that all of his charities, um, they, they don't realize that he has charities, but his uh, ginger ale and his, um, his, uh, 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 his root beer, uh, his root beer yeah. you know, the proceeds go to restore black cemeteries in that area. Really? So it, it gives back to the community. Bourbon... Bourbon is Kentucky. Well, now it branched throughout the America since yeah. it has to be made in America. But to me, bourbon is Kentucky. Yeah. And Kentucky is the community. Yeah. Well, their taxes and stuff pave roads and stuff out there. Like it, everything, yeah. like, dude, if it wasn't for those distilleries, um, Kentucky wouldn't be what it is, mm-hmm. in yeah. my opinion. Because a lot of people like, don't realize it once it goes so into back. the barrel, the, you know, yeah. that, that barrel is taxed from yeah. the moment it goes in. Mm-hmm. All the way until it's dumped, yep. hmm. and they pay taxes on it. Yep, and and all that tax goes into the roads and just just so much different things hmm. um, in that state in general. And so like it's not it's not like it's not like Apple where like they take all their money and you know 
there they send is, it somewhere else to shareholders yeah. like shareholders it gives good, back yeah. to the community not only in its spirit and its product but like the money that they pay in taxes like goes right into the community so yeah that's bourbon itself so. that is and hopefully we get to experience it in october so tell the tell the missus lee he's pressuring me yeah <laughs> you're out yeah you're out i'm i might i'd be a mite i'm a mite you're still a mite yeah maybe oh man well listen we we have the yeah. airbnb we it's a three bedrooms it's big in i think my wife has a fire pit i'm not sure Ooh. so we, we got the fire pit Airbnb. we got a fire pit at airbnb oh yeah yeah so yeah i think it's through uh, marriott it's a marriott airbnb oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh cool um you have seen those it's in the area of Louisville, so okay. we have access to downtown. Can we, we walk ac- to downtown no, or no? No, you tr- we, we'll drive. We have to, okay. Yeah, we'll drive. Gotcha. But in, you know, just the downtown experiences in, in Louisville is, um, they're they're amazing in and of itself. To to go to Mictors, go up to the second floor and say, hey, give me a flight of all your bourbon. Mm. Give me a flight of all your rice. Mm. You know, to, to walk to Louisville Slugger and to see how bats are made and to go, you know, Stitzel Weller. You know, you have your key club that we're in and to yeah. be able to see the little fat groundhogs, you know, digging underneath the rack house of Stitzel Weller, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, as you sit and watch and you, you're drinking because they have good pimento cheese dip there. Mm, it's really? yeah. Just to, to be able to snack and drink bourbon and, and see the grounds and mm-hmm. it Louisville, you know, that's a day of in itself. So we're close to that. Hmm. You know, we're going to be doing buff, uh, Buffalo Trace runs every day just to just to make sure, we, you know, we get what they have to offer. Yeah. And uh, from that, you know, Jim Beam, uh, Four Roses, Heaven Hill, just those. And, you know, the downtown experiences. Hmm. For sure. We'll make the trip. Well, dude, it's been fun. Thanks, yeah. bro. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming on today. It was fun. Need you back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe. We'll throw some links up in the, in the video. If you want to see the same tabs that we've been viewing, but like, and subscribe. Thanks for showing up today, guys. Thank you.